Hello there, Rare Beauty is going global, so to celebrate their highly anticipated arrival in Australia and a long list of other countries, I'm sharing my long-awaited review of their Stay Vulnerable collection. If you're new to Selena Gomez's brand, I shared a detailed overview of the aesthetic and overall approach last year, but Rare luckily isn't as rare anymore. It's now available in international Sephoras, including Sephora Australia, as of just a few days ago. If you're into minimal, monochromatic makeup like me, this collection of five colour groups across three different formulas is a dream. It launched in mid-January and I've used something from this collection almost every time I've done my makeup in the past few months. There are three Stay Vulnerable products, the Melting Cream Blush, Liquid Eyeshadow and Glossy Lip Balm, and they come in five colour families, Nearly Apricot, Nearly Neutral, Nearly Rose, Nearly Mauve and Nearly Berry. There's also an all over eyeshadow brush. I'll run through the formulas and swatch every shade, then compare them to some existing Rare Beauty products, swatch each colour group together, and share my favourites at the end. Selena says this collection celebrates the soft, flushed look we get when we feel most vulnerable. For some, the colour stories might be too subtle here, but I love this consistent, romantic colour family. Not only an excellent monochrome moment for eyes, lips, and cheeks, but the colours mix and match really well too. Beginning with the Melting Cream Blush. My cream blush obsession knows no bounds, I'll try anything, but a melting cream blush sounded so good. When I first heard about it, I pictured something so soft and creamy, but the formula didn't quite match those expectations. This is described as a mistake-proof liquid light cream blush that melts into a second skin for the most natural looking wash of soft focus color. I love the little pebble poly pocket packaging and the dip inside is satisfying to swirl your finger around in, but here's where I was surprised. It feels incredibly emollient, soft and smooth to the touch. You don't need to apply any pressure. It's really creamy and cooling, but that texture changes as soon as it reaches your skin. It becomes more of a cream to powder, instantly melting to have a blurred look and feel and a slightly powdery texture. It doesn't look dry, but it's not dewy or balmy either, more of a satin or even semi-matte. Compared to the intensely pigmented Rare Beauty Soft Pinch liquid blushes, I can see why this is meant to be more mistake proof because it almost disappears, it really shears out. It feels weightless and thin, but because of that slightly blurred, almost powdery texture, it's going to last a bit longer on the skin than a really creamy blush. I find these applied best straight from the compact with your fingers, quickly and lightly stroke and tap the colour onto your cheeks to blend. Nearly Apricot is described as a muted coral. I picked this shade in my spring makeup edit earlier this year, it's a nice fresh peachy tone. Nearly Neutral is called a soft neutral pink, definitely the shade that stood out most to me and what I reach for most. Love this kind of natural rosy flush. Nearly Rose is described as a true pink, pretty bold compared to the others that are more natural. This is much brighter like a candy or raspberry pink. Nearly Mauve is called a true mauve, but I think this has a touch of rosy pink to it, almost like a deeper, stronger version of Nearly Neutral. Nearly Berry is, no surprises, a deep berry. It looks like a rich blackberry in the compact, but it's more of a jammy mulberry as you blend it in. Next, the Stay Vulnerable Liquid Eyeshadows, described as a weightless liquid to powder shadow that blends seamlessly for a quick, buildable wash of long-lasting, waterproof, crease-resistant colour. Pretty neat summary for one of my new favourite liquid shadow formulas. In fact, it's one of my favourite liquid shadows I've ever tried. It might be my favourite. There are lots of liquids on the market. Armani Eye Tints have a sheer thin texture. Kosas 10 Second Shadows are super watery but pigmented. Glossier Sky Wash is a very subtle wash of colour. Then Violette FR Year Paints are so intense and creamy there's too much pigment to play with. Out of all of those formulas, to me, Rare Beauty is the most user-friendly by a mile. The formula is creamy and blends evenly. It's not too thin, so it's not patchy or at risk of picking up product when you put more down, but it's not so pigmented that it's difficult to work with. It feels weightless. I'm not conscious of the texture on my skin. It's meant to have a soft satin finish, but it's a little more on the matte side to me, but not a flat, dry-looking matte either. They don't set too quickly, so you have time to blend, but once 
once they do dry, they do not budge. Rare Beauty does have an eyeshadow primer, but I haven't needed to use any type of primer with these and creasing is normally common for me. The angled doe foot is a great shape to swipe straight on, but for a softer look, just start with a dot, blend that in and build from there. Nearly Apricot is called a soft coral, but I think of it as a fun, sunny peach. Wouldn't call it coral because I don't see any corally red or warm pink tones happening here, but the peachy shadow lover in me is fine with that. Nearly Rose is called a soft tea rose pink and it is heaven. My love of pink shadow has been well documented, but this is probably going to become my number one pink shadow suggestion. A soft period drama sort of pink. Nearly Neutral is described as a warm neutral beige, a lovely natural shade. Celebrity makeup artist Hung Van Gogh shared a beautiful tutorial with a smoky brown liner and a soft wash of this colour all over the eyes. Nearly Mauve is described as a soft mauve, but this isn't the bluish purple the name might suggest. It's actually not that dissimilar to one of my favourites, Nearly Neutral. Still fairly warm, just a bit more rosy. Nearly Berry is called a rich berry, a really jammy colour. I do find it a little less creamy and opaque than the others, so it's not quite as even when you blend it out, but that's pretty common at the deeper end of a shade range. These just tick every box for me. I can't stop reaching for them for one and done shadow looks. Interestingly, all of the shades do have incredibly fine shimmer in them. It's really only noticeable in direct sunlight sometimes, so it's hard to capture here, but you might spot a tiny bit in the tubes instead. While we're on eyeshadow, there's also an all-over eyeshadow brush, designed for easy, all-over blending with an angled shape to mimic your fingertips. The liquid shadows blend so well with your fingertips, I don't think the brush is necessary, but I like the design. The surround is higher on one side, so you can use the short, flat side to pick up product and pack it on, then the longer, softer side blends beautifully. Handy to use with other cream shadows too. Rounding out this rare beauty stay vulnerable family with the glossy lip balm, described as a hydrating, non-sticky, long-lasting lip gloss that cushions lips all day with soft, nourishing colour and shine. It's meant to be like a lip mask in a gloss that hugs your lips and visibly plumps. A few things to unpack there. Firstly, this has a lovely, light, comfy, balmy feel, a bit like the Rowan liquid lip balms, but there's something slightly filmy and gel-like about this texture. It's not sticky, just a bit thicker than Rowan, and I'm more aware of the slippy texture. In terms of plumping, doesn't make my lips any bigger, but they do look smooth and slightly fuller because it softens lines a bit. It's described as ultra shiny, but I disagree. I think the beauty of this is that it doesn't have a really wet look shine like a gloss. Your lips have more of a hydrated glow like a balm. In terms of hydration and the soft and moisturized all day long lasting claim, not the case. I very rarely find tinted balms or glosses live up to their hydrating promises because the formulas wear away pretty quickly. This feels lovely when it's on, like it's hugging your lips, but it doesn't last for me. Probably not the sort of formula to pick if you really need a lot of hydration and a long lasting look. The shades are described as a hint of colour, definitely a washed out, subtle style, almost like the look of a very slight stain without the lasting power. The doe foot is really slim, but little gaps on the front and back pick up a nice amount of product. Nearly Apricot is called a soft coral. It only looks slightly different to Nearly Rose in the tube, but it's a pretty summery peachy pink on. Nearly Rose is called a flushed pink, but it's really quite vibrant. I wish it had been a bit softer, like a My Lips But Better flush. Nearly Neutral is called a soft neutral pink, definitely my favourite. It looks quite rich, but on me it goes on as a slight chocolate tint with a touch of berry. Nearly Mauve is described as a soft mauve. This one really grew on me, a pretty soft berry like the leftover tint from a popsicle. Nearly Berry is the deepest by far in the tube, but it's actually a soft sheer berry, a juicy, cool colour like just bitten blueberry lips. A quick comparison to some existing Rare Beauty blushes and balms. You can find more detail on the Soft Pinch Dewy Liquid Blush and Matte Liquid Blush in my first Rare video, but in short, these two are super pigmented blush bottles with a big doe foot. The Dewy formula is very dewy, great for a healthy sort of sheen, and the matte has a bit more of a powdery feel, but still blends and shears out evenly. The Melting Cream Blush sits between the two in terms of the finish, but the texture is much lighter and barely there, and the colour is nowhere near as intense. 
a quick look at the With Gratitude Dewy Lip Balms too. Again, there's a lot more detail in my earlier video, but these are not your average tinted balm. They're so pigmented, I prefer to treat them as more of a lipstick because the color is so solid. The Dewy Balms feel thinner on the lips, they don't have that gel-like texture and they're certainly not sheer, but both have a nice glowy finish. The glossy balms just catch the light a lot more. Time to see the shade trios together. There are slight colour differences, each formula isn't exactly the same, but realistically a really creamy liquid shadow colour can't be perfectly recreated in a sheer glossy product. But those tonal variations also mean you won't look too matchy matchy. In the nearly apricot shade descriptions, the blush is called muted coral, whereas the shadow and gloss are both called soft coral. Nearly Neutral has a little more variation. The blush and gloss are called Soft Neutral Pink, but the eyeshadow is called Warm Neutral Beige. Nearly Rose has three different descriptions. The blush is True Pink, the shadow is Soft Tea Rose Pink, and the gloss is Flushed Pink. Not as much variation in the Nearly Mauve group. The blush is called True Mauve, and the shadow and gloss are called Soft Mauve. And finally, Nearly Berry has three different descriptions. The blush is Deep Berry, the shadow Rich Berry, and the gloss Soft Berry. Picking favourites to finish, I am obsessed with the liquid shadows in Nearly Rose, Apricot, and Neutral, and I've also been enjoying the Melting Cream Blush in Nearly Neutral and Apricot, and the Glossy Lip Balm in Nearly Neutral and Mauve. I'm sure you can tell how much I love the concept and colour family of this collection and at least one of these liquid shadows will live in my makeup bag all year, but I'd love to hear what you think. Have you tried any of these formulas? Were you drawn to one or two particular colour groups? Please share your thoughts in the comments. If Rare Beauty just arrived in your country, let me know what's on your wish list or what you've already added to your cart and make sure you check out my first video to meet the brand and see more of their products. Thanks for watching, see you next time.